Hello Autobots and Decepticons, it's Destroyer here with a brand new game called Transformers Earth Wars. It's available on both Android and iOS. It is in beta at the moment, so it's only available in the Australia, New Zealand and Netherlands app store, but it will be globally released very shortly. Uh, in this game you must choose a faction, either Autobot or Decepticon. I will explain the differences yes. in another video later on. But in this video I will be showing you the Decepticons. So we will run through the introduction and the first campaign which is called Get Megatron. I'll try and cover all the basics here in case you're not familiar with this style of gaming. In the tutorial here we, uh, we're going to build some defenses because we will be being attacked by the Autobots shortly. So we're going to build the most basic defense here which is called the Auto Cannon. It only fires at ground troops. So anything less than five minutes you can skip for free. Now we are going to get attacked now. I will skip most of the dialogue. You can read through all of that at your own leisure when you play the game. So we're just going to get attacked by one bot here which is Jetfire. Jetfire is an auto bot and he is an air troop. Just for demonstration purposes, he is quite weak and he gets shot down pretty quickly. So now we're going to build our base up even further. We've been given a warrior crystal and we can use that at the space bridge to let more Decepticons come through. You can buy crystals with the premium currency there, however we have been given a specific warrior crystal to use. So we go into the space bridge and we're going to use that crystal. This one specifically will give us a warrior. There are five classes, warrior, air, special, gunner and medic. Now the bot we get here will be bludgeon, which is the equivalent of iron eye from the autobots. They both have the rush in ability. So he's a one star. There are four star levels to the bots. One star can be upgraded to level 20, two star to level 40, three and four star goes to 50 and 60. So now we have bludgeon on our side. We can, we're going to uh, build some more. We're going to build a harvester first. You use uh, alloy to build energon harvesters and energon to build alloy harvesters, as well as the storage. So now we can uh, collect some, produce and collect some resources. We need some way to store it. So we'll build the storage next. Now these are under five minutes, so you can skip them for free. So now that we have the uh, enough storage to upgrade our headquarters, we're going to go and do the campaign and uh, get some loot so we can upgrade the headquarters. Now this first campaign will unlock Megatron, which is a special class. It's not that difficult to complete the first campaign. It's basically just there to teach you how to use the bots and their abilities. I do show you there are three campaigns here. However, I did record this before the fourth one came out, and there will be more after that as well. So these campaigns are a good way to unlock new bots. This base has a couple of resource harvesters at the front and an auto cannon just behind that, behind the walls and there's a headquarters behind that. Now you can only deploy your troops in the uh, area where those green arrows are. It would be better for a ranged troop to attack the headquarters from the far east side. However, the uh, melee troops would be in range of that auto cannon. This tutorial wants us to specifically deploy our troops right here in front of the harvesters. And this is to demonstrate their abilities. Bludgeon's ability is called Rush In, and he will charge to the target, damaging walls along the way. Now we're instructed to deploy Star Scream, which is an air troop. It is long range. So once we uh, destroy enough buildings here, we will collect some ability points, and that will allow us to use Star Scream's ability, which is called Air Strike. 
airstrike will drop bombs on the target and don't forget that the auto cannon cannot attack air troops so it is uh, quite safe to fly over that so there's no defenses left here so it's quite straightforward each building you destroy is worth one ability point and each time you use the ability the uh, the cost to use it increases by one ability point so you really need to um, use all of your bots abilities to save on ability points so you manage to get some resources there each win gives you uh, a certain amount of experience for each of your bots you have to deploy the bot to get the experience if you happen to lose the attack the experience will be lower and the amount will depend on uh, what buildings you have destroyed so obviously the headquarters would be worth the most amount of experience. So now we can upgrade our headquarters to level 2. That gives us access to a whole lot of buildings there. New walls. So that's less than 5 minutes. We can skip that immediately. We still have some leftover resources. We have some achievements we've done there, so we can claim and get some cyber coins. That's the premium currency used to speed up your builds. You can also use it to purchase resources and uh, buy new bots. So I'll let you enjoy this uh, storyline on your own time. So we'll skip through this. If you look in the top right hand corner you'll see we have 245 fuel cells. These are required for battle, it costs 5 per battle and once you drop below 50 they do take uh, 4 minutes to recharge. So you are given 250 to start with. So each of these do cost 5 fuel cells to do as well. So now we're moving on to the second campaign mission now. We have two bot slots here. Uh, it doesn't really matter the order you put them in there. However, it does help when deploying them on the battlefield. So usually you might want to put uh, warriors at the, at the beginning since they do have higher hit points and can take a lot more damage. So I'm going with Bludgeon and Starscream since these are the only two I have. So this mission is called Crystals. This base has something new called Autobot Outpost. You can't attack this building, however it does spawn a bot on defense. We will try and avoid that since it does do quite a lot of damage. I'll get to that at a later stage. And if we attack from the east side, we only have to worry about two auto cannons. Now these do damage to uh, ground troops only. It's best to deploy the warrior first since it can soak up a lot of damage. These air troops are short range, but they are longer range than the warrior. So it can safely do damage from behind, since these auto cannons can only attack a single target. And they also can't attack air troops. So when you use the abilities, they will not get attacked. So the uh, warrior survived quite well here. Now we're just left with the headquarters. There's no other defenses within range. There is a fast forward button on the right hand side there. If you hold that down, you can uh, quickly get to the end of this attack. And we uh, safely avoided that Autobot outpost. Because we won this, we get the full amount of experience. So any bot you deployed in battle will get all of that amount. Once again, if you fail to win a battle, you'll only get partial amount of experience based on the buildings that you destroyed. So 1,000 Energon and 1,000 Alloy there. Bludgeon has leveled up. And Starscream has as well. So once they reach level 10, you do need to research them so they can continue to level 20, which is the one star limit. And we received a character crystal. Now you use this at the space bridge to bring another Decepticon through to your base. Now I'm not sure if this is always the same bot, but in this case we will get Thundercracker, which is an air troop again. 
and the Autobot equivalent of Thundercracker is Silverbolt. They both have the EMP bomb ability. So now we have one warrior and two air troops. We can now upgrade our shuttle which will allow us to um, bring three bots into battle. The level of the shuttle is limited by the level of your headquarters. You can get more bots by buying crystals and you can also uh, get bots from the free crystal which you can claim every eight hours. So if you go to the space bridge you can say get more and in the menu there is a free crystal which is available every eight hours. This may give you a battle boost or some research ability resource called Spark or hopefully a new bot. If you do happen to get a duplicate bot, it will get converted to another resource. In this case we managed to unlock Swindle which is a gunner class. He has the ability called Incendiary Barrage. Now the equivalent in the Autobots faction is Sunstreaker. They have a long range attack and a slow movement speed. So now we have another bot to choose from here. There's four. So we have the warrior, two flyers and a gunner. We want to upgrade our headquarters later on but we don't quite have the resources yet. Plus I think we also need to be level two. So we do need to uh, build some more buildings or upgrade them in order to increase our player rank. We do have a couple more defenses we can build. Whether I suggest upgrading your harvesters and storage. You definitely need higher level storage to be able to hold the resources required to upgrade the headquarters. These are six minute builds so you do have to wait one minute to um, finish them for free. Or you can just uh, skip using the cyber coins. I'm not sure if these two upgrades are going to be enough to increase my player rank to two. But we'll see. So I do have uh, below five minutes now so I can go ahead and finish those. Now each one of those will give me 18 experience towards my player rank. We'll finish the other one now. Increases the production rate per hour. Unfortunately not quite enough for rank two. So I do need to do one more upgrade. I still have resources left so I'm going to do my storage. And I might as well do both here. So that's another six minutes each. I'll let those two upgrades finish while I'm at battle. So we're going to continue the campaign and do mission number three. We do have enough storage space to store the reward there. So now we have three slots. I'll uh, put the warrior in the first slot. Uh, I'll put the gunner in second slot and we'll use an air troop for the third slot. Definitely have enough squad power there. More than the recommended amount. So this one's called Exposed Flank. It's just explaining the ability points here which I went through earlier on. So you destroy buildings to get more ability points so you can use your bot's abilities. It sort of recommends you coming from the west side there uh, so you can gain a lot of ability points but you do need to go through that Autobot outpost. I strongly recommend attacking from the east side since you do have six ability points to start with and if you deploy your warrior at the front line it can uh, absorb quite a lot of damage there. Use the, the warrior's ability there to rush in through the wall. That helps your uh, long range troops to get through. And it's quite straightforward here. So once again I held down that fast forward button to finish quickly. It's quite handy. I'll get to that Autobot outpost at a later stage. So we're leveling up these bots nicely here. The higher they go, the higher their hit points and their damage. It doesn't upgrade their abilities, you can do that separately. However, the abilities is a, a percentage factor of your primary abilities, or primary damage. Now that storage is upgraded, we do get to player rank 2. We get some uh, shards there which I'll explain at a later time. And we'll go ahead and finish the Energon as well. 
And I'm not sure if we have enough for the headquarters, I don't think so. Just a little bit short on alloy and the Energon actually, so we need to do one more battle. Go back into the campaign, the fourth one. The uh, rewards get higher and higher, but the attacks get harder and harder. So once again, the warrior at the front line, Swindle, which is the gunner, and Thundercracker, the air troop. It's a good combination, it's good to uh, mix them up, especially with the abilities. Bring in different abilities. Speaking of abilities, there's currently about, I think, 22 unique abilities and 27 Autobots in both factions. So here we have a new defense which is called the laser turret. Now this attacks air and ground so be careful with your flyers. When you do use the abilities they will take some damage from that when they fly over. So it is best to take down the laser turrets before using your air troops. However the damage isn't that high so I tend to just ignore that. And I do have um, some other abilities here, I'm not really using it at the moment. Some of them are better used for uh, when there's a lot of defenses around. So rushing is quite good. If that warrior dies, the uh, long range troops will take a lot of damage. I should have used the EMP bomb to show you how that works. That actually will disable the defense. It's quite handy. That would have been a better choice here. That would have uh, kept the warrior from taking damage. So another mission complete. Good loot, good experience. You will get them to level 10 rather quickly. So now that's enough loot, we can upgrade the headquarters. And eventually upgrade the shuttle again, get the research laboratory and increase our troop strength and abilities. So now we're instructed to uh, have a look at our team. In, uh, in here you can uh, hold your finger down on the screen and rotate around your bots, get a specific angle. Then you can just uh, single tap on the bot and it will transform. There's some pretty cool animations there. You can just keep ta tapping backwards and forwards. And also tap the arrows on the left and right hand side there to rotate through your collection of bots. So it's pretty cool. Transformations are very nice there. So we'll get out of there for now, we'll come back when we get some more bots. Now the headquarters is ready to upgrade and it is six minutes. Probably should have started that first. So while you're waiting, you can go ahead and claim some of your achievements. You're getting some cyber coins there. Doesn't take you too long to afford a third build bot. So it's quite handy. I highly recommend getting five bots. Your progress can be very quick when you have five, five bots working on upgrades. In just two weeks, I managed to get to headquarters level nine. So just 25 seconds left there. You can see all the upgrades you'll get once, you, once that finishes. There's some uh, more defenses, higher level of defenses. The new laser turret. So at level three, that also gives us the ability to do multiplayer attacks. Where well, we do need to build something called a scanner first. You do get that unlocked at level 3. So now we're just left with one more campaign mission and we get to unlock Megatron. He is he will be our first special class bot. So the last one, decent reward here, 2500 Energon, 3000 Alloy. Still working with the three bot slots here. We'll go with Bludgeon in the first slot as always. Followed by Swindle and I think we take Thundercracker here build him up a bit more. So this is the final push. This mission is introducing a new defense called the mortar which is right in the middle. Down the uh, southeast side there is the Autobot outpost again and three of those uh, auto cannons. It's 
It's pretty much trying to persuade us to come from the west side. There's only the one laser turret to deal with, which is quite easy. A couple of resource buildings, which will get you within range of that mortar. It's very long range, however it does have the blind spot in the middle. So you've got to be careful when you get your warrior up close to that. And we'll start attacking your uh, ranged troops. So we do have 12 ability points there. We can start using our abilities. We really only have the rush in there to deal with, uh, to use, and also the EMP bomb. I did a pretty bad thing there. As you see, I moved the warrior right into the blind spot, and the mortar is damaging my ranged troops. So it did kill one of my troops already. I did use the uh, other ability for uh, Swindle. The incendiary barrage did help out a little bit, but it would have been better to keep the warrior away from that blind spot. So the EMP bomb on the mortar would be much better than that. So that's a lesson learned there. I did manage to survive that, but as you can see, I did take quite a lot of damage. So Megatron, here he comes. We claim our reward here, and we'll have a special class crystal which we use at the space bridge it's almost got swindled to level three there thundercracker is up to three it's increasing his hit points and damage so there you have it it's actually called a leader crystal which will specifically give you megatron so here at the space bridge we can unlock him will always be a two star since that is the lowest he has. He can be upgraded to level 40. And he is a special class. Megatron has the ability called Inspiring Charge which is the same as Optimus Prime. So that's the first campaign complete. I do highly recommend doing the other campaigns since you will unlock some new bots. Stay tuned for my next video where I'll be doing an Autobots versus Decepticons comparison to help you make a better decision as to which faction you should join. Stay tuned for that guys, bye!